Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Fast Frame. If you have a photo, magazine, newspaper, piece of art, even a jersey like that one, call Fast Frame. They can go subtle or they can go full on flashy like that piece with the red and silver. Whatever you fancy in terms of framing, Fast Frame can deliver it for you. Fast Frame, they're out in the Common Shopping Center, North, uh, West Knoxville at uh, North Peters Road. All right, uh, this segment, we're going to do a scouting report for you. What well, we? Mark Pancratz <laughs> is going to do a scouting report for you. Mark, I know you had the, the scout, you had some of the scouting notes from last year when Tennessee played Mercer. Uh, Tennessee team didn't really go into that team with a lot of, uh, a lot of pep in their step, and I think mm -hmm. it cost them. But we're going to look at your scouting report for the Mercer game today. Let's go to the first graphic, and Mark, take it away. Uh, well, Bud Thomas is our glue guy. We've got to make him put on the floor, likes to catch and shoot. Uh, Anthony White really hunts his shot as soon as he gets in. Uh, come, good three-point shooter. Jacob Gallon coming off a big game versus Duke, 20 points. Uh, we got to stay down on his shot fake. Uh, really uses that to his advantage. Langston Hall, uh, he's a playmaking guard. He's actually player of the year in their league. Got to keep him out of late, also at, out of the lane. Also averages 5.6 assists. Uh, Daniel Kersey, really good in ball screen offense for them as their big guy, lefty, better over his right shoulder, but not very physical. Was actually seven for seven from the field against us last year. Mm -hmm. uh, Aiki Nuamu, uh, very good three-point shooter, but doesn't like ball pressure. Really is their only guy coming off the bench, 11 points versus Duke. And then Darius Moten, really high motor, uh, got to keep him off the glass, can't let them get easy baskets because of that. Okay. And next, you're going to take a look at some of their strengths and weaknesses for us. Uh, their offensive spacing, one of the best offensive teams in the country, run a lot of different actions. Our help guys off the ball have to stay engaged, be ready to help on ball screens and screening action. Uh, they really pack the line defensively, and they force teams to shoot contested jump shots. Uh, they, want to, they want to make you beat them from the outside. Uh, weaknesses were actually tougher to come up with. Uh, obviously, that's why they're a good team, but their physicality, they're not very big underneath. Uh, they struggle to rebound and defend on the blocks. They're actually 25-5 and five if they out-rebound their opponent. Uh, their depth, they only play six guys, and so we can uh, hopefully wear them out. Uh, and then we got the next one, we're going to take specifically a look at their offense. Yeah, like I said, offense is the big thing. They're, they're a great offensive team. Uh, they set a lot of ball screens with Corsi, which will be a, a key matchup of how Stokes gets out and defends that and moves. Uh, they're slow tempo. They get teams exposed in the half court because they got guys that can shoot it. Um, and they do a great job of sharing the juices, uh, which means they have a lot of, uh, lot of assists. They get in and find the open man because they have a great basketball IQ. Excellent. Mark Pancratz, ladies and gentlemen. That was <laughs> impressive. Thank you very much for that scouting report. Now I ask you, key to Tennessee winning today. Dominate the paint. Uh, we, gotta, we say it every week, but playing through John L. Stokes uh, and then the way that we can stay engaged and, and, and not allow their ball screen offense to, to get our help defense moving in areas that they're not supposed to be. Uh, Monty Brown, who's a big man for them off the bench, won't be playing. He suffered a concussion against Duke. He wasn't a guy that got a lot of minutes, but for a team that's small, you figure he might have gotten some against Tennessee today. But here's the worrisome point. You're right that you're going to have the size advantage. Duke had the size advantage. Duke, Duke was, especially in the first half, they owned the boards, and yet when you shoot 55%, you can erase a lot of the, the height differential. Guys, your thoughts mm -hmm. on Tennessee Mercer today? Not, not a prediction, but um, just thoughts going into this game from a Tennessee mindset. Mercer looks like a, an Ivy League team with a lot more talent. I mean, they play smart, they play hard. Uh, you know they're well coached. You're going to have to bring an A game today. You're not going to be able to just uh, go out there and try and out-talent this bunch. Don't do what you did against Iowa and fall behind by 12 early. I think if Tennessee does that, they're done. Jimmy? Watch the assist turnover ratio. When Tennessee is positive in that area, they are really hard to beat. But against South Carolina, they weren't, and they still won it, but it wasn't a very good South Carolina team. It was six assists, 17 turnovers, something like that against Florida. Watch that. I think that's a big stat for Tennessee, more assists than turnovers. And, uh, you know, you always keep an eye on you. I think you know what you're going to get from Stokes. You know what you're going to get from McCray. It seems like if Tennessee gets 20 out of Richardson and Barton, they win. If they don't, mm -hmm. they're in trouble. So those are the two I'd keep an eye on. Need Barton to warm up again. He yeah. went through a little streak where he had three good games. He's since gone in the tank from the shooting side. Need, to him, need for him to pick it back up. All right, when we come back, a reality check on the Bruce Pearl stuff. Then we got our predictions for Tennessee Mercer and Tennessee-Michigan, if Tennessee gets past Mercer, come on back on the sports source. 